before you start thinking about snowballing it on the rest of the map. I definitely agree. In-game, target him. Uh, but in picks and bans, too many things up top that he can work with. I really think that going after Bangi's champion pool is a strong way to go. They first pick Rek'Sai when they have Faker on their team and LeBlanc is, is up, and they still forego the LeBlanc pick in favor of getting Bangi on one of these two champions. Well, they have to ban LeBlanc this time. I'm, I'm pretty confident that you're not going to give it over to SK Telecom on that red side unless they think they have some sort of spectacular ah. counter pick. And very quick to note, of course, it is Faker starting as opposed to Easy Who. No substitutions this game. As we're looking at the Maokai band out, that got an aw oh, from Kobe. So, yeah, I mean, I guess they will. They do want to take out the front line here for SKT. Front line was something that they really had a problem with, grouping up towards those mid game team fights, and he plays the Maokai and team fights extremely well. So it, it's looking increasingly likely that either Urgot or Kalista is going to be left up this game. Now we've seen that first pick priority on the Urgot from Fnatic before in this tournament, taking it two games uh, on that blue side. So they may want to grab that again. Yeah, I would not be surprised if they do, or even if uh, he shows up in the bands here. No LeBlanc ban. No Rek'Sai. I actually kind of like the no LeBlanc ban uh, from Fnatic. If you're going to get a win against SKT, do it against Baker's <laughs> LeBlanc. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the Nautilus to round things out. So changing a little bit up from there the last is. time. And the Urgot will be available. It will be picked first. So high priority for Urgot once again on Fnatic side. SK Telecom <laughs> reply. Two of the five champions they ran in the previous game, Rek'Sai and Thresh. Wolf's Thresh was phenomenal. Yeah, once again, the support and the jungler, these kind of understated roles being picked so early for SKT. No pressure being put on Bangi, and this Nautilus ban that we keep going back to for Yellowstar really hindering and the early Thresh pick. Fnatic, exactly. And if we think about, I think this is a very smart way to play the game from SK Telecom, uh, because they're confident in that 2v2 matchup, and we know that Steelback will be left alone, and then the roams happen on the map. We also saw earlier that Rainover had one of the highest kills before 15 minutes in this tournament. Deny him the jungler that he's going to be able to make the best plays on early in this tournament, and or early in the game, rather, and then move on from there. Exactly. Their focus is on these early dragons and these early team fight control the champions that you have in positions to make those plays early are the jungler the support and the teleport we'll see if they make it work this time around last second switch it will be the rumble for huni the champion that really accelerated him to fame in the european lcs and febben once again on the block so the azir is available uh, mm. right now for faker if he wants it and you can get some pretty nice poke damage early on in leblanc uh, Faker has been on kind of the wrong side of that matchup a little bit. We did go to a blind pick game where he had to play against Coco's Azir, and he did get some kills, but he had a really hard time on LeBlanc early in that matchup. Plus, as we've seen so many times when Faker does pick Azir, early target of Roams. We'll see whether or not Fnatic and Yellowstar can get those Roams to work, Kobe, because it is Yellowstar's champion and Rainover's champion that is left. You have to think. Rainover is going to favor a tank at the moment, unless he really wants to go all in and pick another early game jungler. We'll yeah. see what he decides. Uh, Sivir being hovered over right now, and that's probably going to be the lock-in. Taking away this Sivir has been very good against against Fnatic. And what is Steelback going to do now? Uh, he's well, he's going to play the Urgot. The Urgot first yeah. pick, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not really, not really a takeaway, but more of a runaround. Yeah. All right, we'll see how this works out. Gnar locked in for Marin. And the Sivir, the makings of a lot of mobility. Strong team fights. We'll see what Faker decides to final pick once we get there. What are you expecting for support and jungle from Fnatic now to round out their comps? Definitely going to uh, uh, expect some more frontline presence uh, because they do have the Rumble up top and the LeBlanc mid. Um, going to have to probably be an AD jung based jungler as well. They already have, you know, this double AP. And the attack damage threat, while it is substantial from Urgot, it's mostly single target. Uh, for the team fights, you may be concerned if you have this much magic damage. Let's Unconcerned. See. Let's think for a second. If Rainover were to play an AD jungler, what would it okay. be? Okay, it's going to be the Gragas. He wants to match the early game of the Rek'Sai. So this is going to be very AP heavy. And your AD carry is Urgot Steelback. So if Steelback gets behind early, 
and you build Magic Resist. Nar can build Magic Resist for his lane. He can build Magic Resist for the team fights. It looks like an easy item path here for Amaran to sort of take over this game. And not to mention that when Steelback, and we will see Ari for Faker, surprisingly, a champion we did not see at all in the, the playoffs in Korea. Love this skill matchup, though. Let's see if the Vivian still has that confidence. I want to see them go blow for blow. AP Assassins in the mid lane. Let's see what you got. So coming in, Fnatic, uh, as for Steelback, we've seen him, when he got that tier, be killed multiple times to dives under the tower. So this is a champion that, you're right, if he gets behind on, it's going to be problematic. And we've seen that he gets behind not only on CS, but he gets <laughs> killed on Urgot as well. Going to be a tough lane for Fnatic. They tried to the support Annie yesterday, and it did not work out. Once again, Fnatic with their definitive style of team composition. Early to mid-game power, and trying to just overrun their opponents. And that's going to be particularly difficult their opponents are SKT. And they have really no tank line here either. Uh, they're going to be very reliant on Azonias for Rumble. And that's going to be a big turning point probably for them in team fights. But if this NAR, like you're saying, Kobe, gets some of those MR items, it will be very, very difficult for them to win in a 5v5. Oh, Could be a similar situation to last game. Quadra AP composition, which you're about to see flash <laughs> on your screen. Fnatic 0-1 in this best of five. Hit us up on Twitter, hashtag FNC win, hashtag SKT win. See if the numbers can swap themselves around. We will be seeing the first in-game Ari, and it will be in Faker's hands. He was dodging and ducking and diving Febivin's LeBlanc on Ezreal, and he's got the ability to do it again, or even land a point blank charm if Febivin yeah. distortions into farm. This Fnatic lineup is going to take some very strong play in the laning phase and some very well coordinated uh, groupings from them because you've got a Rumble with a Gragas. Pretty desynced ultimates right there. You're going to have to use them in conjunction to try and knock people maybe over to a corridor, and Fibivin will try and pick somebody off that split with the Gragas ultimate. There's just, there's so many changes here with these ultimates from Fnatic. <laughs> they can move people all over the map here. Yellow Star, Steelback rather, learning. Not standing in the tri bush. Caught hey, out yesterday. With the exact. Fischio laid down the rules on how to uh, avoid that. Don't stand in the bush, put a ward there. Hey! <laughs> But I like the fact that they went fishing for it anyway. That does show uh -huh. some of their preparation here to just go in, try for the blind hook, see if he's there, uh, and play for three people on the bottom side. So that's a very specific level one that SKT prepared against Fnatic right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly what they saw from what HQ had success versus Fnatic with. And of course, praise to Steelback for not getting caught this time around. Yellow saw on this Annie has his flash available. No Krugs to flash in and steal, though. Let's make sure he doesn't burn that flash in inopportune ways. Damage advantage, Steelback and Fnatic. <laughs> All right. So uh, I love to use this time for fun faker facts about his champion pool. So Ari is actually his second most played champion of all time. 10 and 5 record on it. So it has been so a So it's beatable. <laughs> is what you say. <laughs> yeah, by other Koreans, you know. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> well, there's two Koreans for Fnatic. Let's see if they can try shut Faker down. Oh, Benki is actually going to take the Gromp here, it looks like, and not give their bottom lane any experience. Once again, it's going to be Fnatic taking the side camp, running into this SKT bottom lane. We'll see if they can actually capitalize on it this time with the Urgot Annie. Could be a very aggressive move. Uh, has the capabilities of bullying a Thresh. Fair of him being bullied in the mid lane by Faker. Using that orb of deception at max range. I'm looking forward to seeing whether or not Febivin can distortion in without getting charmed. Green over, playing with the blue buff a little bit. Hey, Faker messed that up in game one. <laughs> it, it resets, did. it resets. Yeah, I mean, now with the hard leash set at only five, a lot of people just kind of gave up on, you know, juggling it. But you can actually save a substantial amount of health in the jungle if you still do walk back to the tether range and make it miss a couple of auto attacks by checking it. So it's worth doing, especially if you're Gragas, who's somebody who chugs both of his potions in the jungle, wants to go for early moves. Bottom lane here uh, is extended fairly far up. And that he is incredibly super dangerous to do when your mid lane is pushed up like that. And uh, this Rek'Sai was starting on the bottom side of the map, so 
We need getting out without Dennis a grab. Dennis though, look at the answer here. Well, let's see if it works out. Rainover, he is going to get in with the body slam, lands the barrel, summon a heal already, but Yellow Star, that's a flash into a two-man stun. Acid Hunter goes out. Steve oh, goes for the first blood. That's going to get some auto attacks down at the bank. And this time round, the flash engage from Yellow Star pays off with a kill. What did I say? Juggle the aggro, a little bit higher health, go right down the river. Nice move from Rainover, and Steelback is the one to go into <laughs> tower range and grab the first blood. This is Fnatic starting out with a, exactly the money where they need it to be. On Steelback to have that attack damage threat. And no flash engage from Rainover, all from Steelback, only Yellow Star. But Yellow Star was punished on this ending when he had the no utility mobility summoner spell yesterday. We'll see if Bengi can punish him at all in this bottom lane. Well, one thing about that gang, too, was Wolf waited a long time to use his flash right there. They were trying to get out of it without using any summoners. Got a little bit greedy. If he had just flashed a bit sooner, I think that first blood wouldn't have happened. So a bit of a misplay there. Interesting here, because Rainover's in enemy territory. They're a little bit outnumbered because Urgot hasn't come back. All right, so they won't take the fight uh, without the support of Steelback. Yellow Star and Rainover exit enemy territory with the Krug. And also er nice to see Rainover ganking bottom. It's not something he does all that often. He does tend to pay most of his attention to Febivin and Huni. Small adaptation results in another first blood for Fnatic. They got it uh, in the previous map, uh, previous game rather. We'll see if they can make it count. And the fact that he did it so early is crucial because Marin is on that Nar, one of the champions that he does upgrade early home guards fairly often to keep his teleport up to answer moves bottom. Usually it's very hard to make those moves against SKT because they have such a strong bottom lane and because Marin manages his teleport so well. Oh, we just noticed after that uh, back by Bang, he's picked up a very early Avarice Blade. Come wow, on, this is... your head a little bit at this. The thing is, <laughs> is this a part of the meta bait because, hey, I've got an Avarice Blade. Oh, There's no way we're going to have a juggler back. down here. Oh, Steelback does have Flash, does have Heal. Boomerang goes out. He manages to put the Terra Capacitor up, but Bingy sinks his fangs they in. Left That's a teleport from Hooney <laughs> at level 5. They're going to trade one for one, and it looks like Hooney is going to get the kill. It's a one for one, but it costs a teleport. Yeah, we'll see if Mara can answer, but a nice teleport down from Huni to pick that one up. Yeah. And SK Telecom, I really feel in both of these games, they haven't been playing around Huni very well. We saw that pretty poor gank up in the top side in the last game, and they're not respecting the play style of Fnatic and expecting Huni to come in, and they're getting punished for it. Right, Huni, who was able to shove up his wave before teleporting. It was a great time for him to go for this teleport. Uh-oh. Uh Oh, they're going to think about diving. Yellow Star doesn't have his stun yet. They get the teleports out of Marin. That's the, hook. That's the play backwards. Now Wolf is in trouble. Hootie's trying to get one in reply. All he right. gets the kill. He flashes out, but Marin flashes forward. Boomerang Blade slows him down. The equalizer's on the back line. Rainover unable to keep Marin in place long enough. And now Rainover thinking about the kill on Bang. He's going to back away. We do see in the middle lane Ignite ticking away. We didn't see that trade, but another kill on the board for Fnatic in Hooney's hands and a needlessly large rod at six and a half minutes. That is a very bold start on this rumble. So Hooney really looking to take it to Marin in the top side. Marin finishing up a hex drinker and Bengi. Go ahead, do a little bit of counter jungling right here after the fracas in the mid lane as well. All right, yeah, let's take a look at this trade here. Oh, Faker completely misses the skill shot and has to use his ultimate into the minion wave. I say that was very well played by Fibivin. Okay. <laughs> Which is he still back? He, okay, so he didn't come out ahead, you know, in any, you know, summoner spells or get a kill or anything, but I feel like that was fairly well played. And just to talk about this Avarice Blade a little bit more as well. Nope, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to give you a chance, Monty. Hooney is going to throw down that shield, trying to get away. Rainover's a long way, and now Hooney's yeah. overheated. Wolf and Make Marin trying to chase. So. Marin is going to dismiss the stun. In fact, Nas Hooney against the wall. Hooney's now got a little bit longer to, to stay alive, but just gets run down. Wolf, Wolf, Wolf. Those home guard, or the uh, Moby Boot uh, support ganks. Never expect them around that seven <laughs> minute mark, but you definitely should. Really good move by him getting into the brush. But it does leave your bottom lane. You know, Fnatic should... Monty, you're never going to talk about it because they're always <laughs> going to fight. Hello Star does go forward with a flash and Bang is going to get away. Acid Hunter is unable to secure the kill. 
Uh, I think also that top lane gang, perfect timing. They knew Equalizer and Flash were down for Huni, so it's just a punishment of the play he made on that bottom side. And to go to the Everest Blade, I, I, <laughs> it's very questionable, but you, at the very least what I will say is if there's a tear on the other side as Wolf comes in with Bengi, nothing gonna... They seriously do not want you to talk about this item, Monty, because Yellow Star gets <laughs> caught out. And we're not going to get a chance to revisit it. Oh, now, come on! Yeah, is visiting Huni. You talked about SKT playing around Huni, and now they are doing it. Equalizer is down. It's Korean on Korean battle, and it's Huni that wins. Huni takes down Faker in a 2v1. And for Vivian, once more, that's a double kill for Huni. And Ari is beatable. <laughs> Excuse me, Huni. Oh, oh, Rainer is hooked. Oh, Word, Raynov is knocked up and he's taken out. Way to ruin Honey's Honey's moment there, Raynover. Come on, man. <laughs> we can't give one moment. All right, that's going to be the dragon. Then, because of that move, this is going to be a trade. Uh, and it. Whoa, never mind. Yellow Star coming to bully them off. I don't think you guys are allowed to talk this game. Apparently, because <laughs> every time we try to break anything down, we're trying to create points here and build off of them. <laughs> Wow, what a great turnaround from Huni right there. Faker coming into the top side, did have the Negatron Cloak, but still actually gets burned down. Needlessly large rod completed there, as we were talking about earlier, and Huni just comes in with the damage and a bit of an overcommitment without a lot of hard CC in the top side. Fabivin with the follow there as well, able to come in and pick up the scraps, help Huni get another kill on top of the turret-assisted one. Interesting just to <laughs> note, Huni went through a couple of item choices, upgraded Sork shoes, resold, <laughs> picked up a couple of different odds and ends. It is now working towards that haunting guys and a pink ward. As we see Rainover setting up on the bottom lane, we do see the hyperkinetic position reverser as Febervin just gets chunked down, by eating that charm. And it looks like Bengi's also made his way to the bottom lane. He's coming in, looking like they want to set up for a gank right here. Quick pink ward will reveal There's both thing there. Both teams should also be aware of the teleport cooldowns because they were both used bottom at the same time. So this could easily turn into multiple members down bottom. And it will. Yellowstar sidesteps a death sentence. He has a teleport from Huni. Steelback is going to swap Bang in. Yellowstar stays alive. Steelback has got the kill onto Bang and the Equalizer is looking for more. Now Huni lands an Electro Harpoon onto Mara who TP down as well. The crunch comes down. The Gnar goes back. What? The death sentence goes wide. And Fnatic are able to pick themselves up one for zero with Rain over threatening a re-engage. I don't understand why SKT is committing right here and Rain over in the tri brush. They're going for it. Here comes Huni, the flame spit is on and a three-man stun. Yellow Star holds SKT under the tower. Steel back three, one and one. That's a double kill. Turns on to Morin. Steel back unable to get the kill credit, but now Faker once more. He sparrow rushes in. Huni gets taken down. That's a lot of gold to Faker as Faker lands the charm onto Steel back. It's a one for three trade, I believe, at the end of the day. And Fnatic are playing phenomenal. Yeah, and they're taking advantage of what's been giving to them. Pavivin maybe in a dangerous position right here. Faker not going to find anything. Bang already back in lane. But SKT, they know that this, this Avarice Blade start adds really not any damage to this bottom lane. And so they've just been going hard. And SKT can't play aggressive when they don't have damage from their AD carry right there. Exactly. They know that they've got the under itemized AD carry plus the top laner when those both teleport in you know they're coming at the same time and this is the four kill rumble who started with a needlessly large rod coming in and a really really good swing there for Fnatic but man the alley-oop from Marin to Wolf there and Wolf really just misjudging the distance as well. So it was also mechanical misplays from SKT, which are very rare. However, it holds true. They still are able to converge on the Dragon after everyone after that fight was so low on HP, they all had to retreat. All right, let's take stock of the situation. Nine kills to five. One Dragon to SKT, 2,000 gold to Fnatic. CS even in the top and mid lane and steal back with a 33 CS lead. <laughs> that is the first time those sentences have been said this tournament thanks to all of the repeated ganks. But right. it is working out. But Bang is getting the extra gold from the average split. <laughs> oh, <laughs> worth, Trevor, okay, worth. Okay, let's have a look. Currently <laughs> has earned an additional 200 gold. We will keep track of that. Yeah, no, I think it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we, we, we got the sarcasm. <laughs> uh, we do see Bang on the retreat. 
definitely going to be some words about that Everest Blade and how it works out. Tower fell in the top lane, so Huni, in theory, a little bit unlocked. We'll see if that pays to, to be the case. And Steelback gets played back. It's about to lose a minion. He's getting ah, by the Death the Ethan. The stuns comes out, and that was a misplay from Yellowstar. They turn their attention to Yellow, and he's going to get caught out as well. Movement speed from Bang on the hunt goes backwards. Not really 100% sure if Yellowstar is actually putting some damage in reply. Yeah, Faker trying to follow Fabivid down here, but Rainover did hold him up. Bengi trying to intercept. Fabivid's still here. They should know that he's down there. They need eh, to back eh, off. Uh, everybody saw that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty big wall. Not going to get over that one. Wolf did make up for his uh, earlier uh, whiff on the death sentence, though. That was a good prediction on Steelback moving forward. Still back, almost second-guessing himself, sort of, you're like, oh, where do I go? How do I juke? And then ends up getting caught. 4-2-2, Four, two, two. got himself that initial shroud, as well as the Man Immune, currently 400 out of 750, stacking quite rapidly. And Huni actually coming for a mid lane gank right now. Baker, see if he gets Good. taken out here. There's the Spirit Rush, but not much coming out of that one so far. Not this time around. Huni holds onto the Equalizer. Good burst damage from Febivin already, though. Even through that Negatron Cloak of Faker. And once again, Huni, he constantly, he'll shove up his lane until he gets to the danger zone. They can't get any wards deep in the red side jungle, so he doesn't feel confident shoving past that destroyed turret. And he'll utilize his time either going back to base or, you know, making a visit to try and relieve pressure here in the mid lane for Febivin. You know, he at least burns the Ari ultimate for a short time. And remember, there is no flash for Steelback. There's support down at the bottom. Huni is now dealing with the Mega Gnar. He gets stunned. He's got Equalizer. Morin, the flash through the Gnar. But Morin winning the 1v1. It looks like Bengi is starting to back away. Yellowstar's just made it back to the lane. And we know it was relatively nearby. A little bit of wasted time for Bengi. He can just instantly throw down the farm alarm and get back into the jungle. Yeah, they want to try and make a play for this blue buff because Faker's ult is down, but they grab Yellow Star. Oh, what a tough so boomerang blade. Great little poke right there. Fnatic are not going to commit to the steal. And they have respected SKT in their own jungle. I just, even though not nothing's coming of it, Faker's decision to go back through the wolves over to the blue was crucial right there. Because Fnatic, look at these two wards, the pink ward and the green ward over the wall, prepped for Febiven to get the assassination on Faker as he goes to pick up the blue, but he's not going to fall far. It goes the safe route. Oh, I do see Yellowstar stuns up Bengi, but nothing further comes from it. Look at the rest of Fnatic. They seem to be pushing up. They've got Febivin for support, and the tower will get dropped if Fnatic are given the time. Minion Wave appears to be pushed up, and they maybe want to get that outer ring, Kobe. Yeah, they have two of their towers under threat, but they are going to be able to take out the last two hits on the bottom outer, but they lose top in return after Huni is pushed out of the lane. Febivin's going to be able to at least make it back to middle and defend. Take a look at Huni's positioning. Marin is going to cancel the recall. Ooh, the pink ward will see Faker, but it bite me too late because he's already here. There's no tower to 2v1 this time around. Faker takes a lot of damage from that flame spinner. There is an hourglass available. Huni throws it down, but Febivin's too far away, and it looks like Faker and Marin will get themselves a kill Febivin. this time around on the board. Febivin is now in a 1v3 as Bengi has come up from the backside and Bengi <laughs> instantly tunnels out the north side. <laughs> so Fnatic here, what they need to do, they have a pretty nice gold lead at right. the moment as uh, Fnatic moves up to the top side and starts sieging down, pushing this wave up. But what they need to do is keep these little skirmishes going. This because this gold lead is not going to mean anything because of how efficient it is to, uh, for SKT to itemize against them. Uh, so they need to keep on fighting, keep on grinding it out, and get probably, I would say, a 6 to 8k gold lead. That's where they're really going to hit their prime, because if they don't get that and this game goes to 30 minutes, they are going to have a lot of problems. Let's see whether or not Steelback's 4-2-2, two, and two, Frozen Heart, almost Mirror Mana, can have a little bit of help in that regard. The only physical damage threat on the side of Fnatic. 
So Bang doesn't feel like actually comp completing the Ghost Plate. He's going to continue to stack the gold on that item right now, but he just has such a mixed bag of items. 405 bonus gold on, <laughs> on this first back Siva Avarice Blade. I'm really <laughs> underwhelmed with these decisions. Oh, Yellow Star, so close to getting caught out. And this time around in this game, thanks to the chaos Fnatic have created, Wolf has been unable to save everybody with the Lantern or set up as many picks as we saw in that slower tempo game in the first of the series. Yeah, usually SKT, when they have Wolf on the Thresh, they make the aggressive plays with him in position for those max range Lanterns. So SKT, they're recalling right now. Marin just got out of Beganar form. I think you just leave this one alone, but they're going to try and fight it. Marin is teleporting in. Death Sentence doesn't connect. Dragons down to 2,000. SKT are coming in close. Equalizer gets thrown down across all of oh. SKT, and Dragons still alive in the back line. Rainov is going low, but no kills on the board. Bengi is being focused by four, and it's Featherbin that gets the kill. Huni chunks down Wolf, and Marin about to go Meganar. He will transform, but as he flashes over the wall, Dragon was still left standing. Two for zero in favor. For Fnatic. Steelback flashed to Urgot Ultimate Faker at the start of the fight, and Faker already spirit rushes away from the, all of the action there. Oh, Marin does not connect with the Gnar. Throws it backwards, so Fnatic secure the Dragon. They need to deal with the wave clear, which is immense in the mid lane, and they are unable to get the tower. 20 minutes on the clock. Fnatic have a lead and are dictating the tempo. If you're SK Telecom, there really isn't any need to fight that dragon. You can go ahead and give this one up. We're gonna take a look at how this goes down right here. Bengi tries to get into the pit. There's the flash position reverser onto Faker. Faker has to flash out and Spirit Rush entirely out of that fight. Misses an orb of his deception. No damage coming in from him as they focus down Wolf. And Marin, again, no Mega Nar in that fight. It had just been used up in the top side. Has to flash the wall in order to get away. Yeah, also, we were looking to continue to watch the Vivint's LeBlanc. This time around, he got a huge double distortion onto Wolf and Bang in the back line running them out of the fight as well. <gasps> Come down. The skin not even of close. his teeth. <laughs> but if you're SK Telecom, giving up one dragon is not the end of the world right there. You just need to wait long enough to get the items you need to win this game. The more you fight with Fnatic right now, especially in such a bad timing when the Mega Nar was down, just a very poor idea, and Fnatic definitely taking advantage of the fact that they are strong right now. And you have to step back and look at Fnatic, considering their mixed performances in the group stage. They put up a decent fight in game one, and now they're sticking it to SKT, but the tricky part is getting those turrets down. Fnatic were pushed away from the last blue buff attempt. We'll see if they can get it this time. Nope. Bengi stole it with smite. Yep, good uh, secure there for Bengi. Time also, it looks like it's going to get harder and harder for SKT to avoid the fights that Fnatic wants to take. The Righteous Glory is in route here from Rainover, and Yellowstar also already has those distortion boots on his Annie for very quick uh, flash turnaround time. The last outer turret going down, they're going to have a lot more territory to work with as well. So the importance of those wards becomes very, very crucial. And I think a little bit of props here to Fnatic. The early Dragon Call worked in their favor a long time ago. A smart move from Blue Buff Steel to mid lane tower. It feels like the shot calling in this game is just ahead of SKT at this point in the matchup. Yeah, I agree. All right, look at this rotation bottom, though. Uh, looks like SKT will be able to secure the bottom tower. They've cut everybody off there. There's no possibility of reinforcements down for this turret, so they will get some global gold for themselves. But Bang's still down without a core item 22 minutes into this game. Meanwhile, Frozen Heart already finished as the second item on the Steelback, so it's a great position to be in as Bang continues to struggle. With the Muramana Transform, he can also afford to rush straight into flat armor penetration because there's so much focus on magic resistance because of the composition from Fnatic. We'll, we'll see if Fnatic can now start to chip away at the inner turrets. They took 21 and a half minutes to crack the outer lane, and it looks like they're trying to push the waves out. The problem with Fnatic's composition is it is extremely poor at sieging. So it's going to be very hard for them to close this game efficiently, but there's still no sign really of an Aegis uh, yet on SK Telecom, which is an item Whoa. that they actually really, really need. Yeah, why is that a giant's belt? Yeah, exactly. Bangi. That should... 
That should still be a crystal. You can turn crystals into <laughs> magic resist aura. So yeah, again, these deep wards, I'm, I'm looking for Fnatic to start getting these wards down so they can make these picks. He needs to land those ethereal chains. Fibberman's not at the best accuracy in either of his uh, LeBlanc performances. They've got the double Righteous Glory, flash up for Yellowstar, ready to make one of the picks. They have the speed to do it. Can they get the positioning? Interesting to see Steelback upgraded the Hex Drinker as opposed to Armor Penetration. Trying to keep himself mm. even more tanky against the likes of Faker as well. Leandri's torment up for Huni. They've got all the damage in the world. Now they need to find the targets to apply them to. It, they're going to have a hard time diving, though, also, at this point, until Gragas maybe gets a little bit tankier. Uh, that's part of the issue with their lack of a tank line here. So Fnatic pretty much has to make picks, like you're saying, Kobe, and to transition them into objectives. There's, that's really probably the only way they can win this game without an overwhelming lead. And something else we also have to highlight, Fnatic would often use Dragon to start team fights If they were unable to take control of the mid-game in Europe, they would simply wait for the Dragon timer and then force you to face check or give up the Dragon. Huni gets jumped on by Mega Nar Marin. Still a minute away before that dragon spawns, and Marin still chasing down with that Banshees and Hex Drinker and Giant Spell Huni. He wants does to not want that fight yeah, at all. He wants to either get the ultimate or the flash out of Huni. Oh! Hourglass! He manages to survive, but Marin's gonna get the kill. Huh. Huni holds on to both. And Huni decides the death timer will be maybe just in time for the dragon fight. Questionable call, gentlemen. It's, it's, it's so definitely hard. risky yeah, it's, because it's about whether Fnatic can control the wards around the dragon right now. Because if they control that area and they control the vision, then they'll have an opportunity. Yellow Star, not going to find a stun. It holds on to his flash as well. Again, it's Huni. He has the mentality of playing for controlling the entire game. Uh oh, 12 seconds left on his death timer, though, so he's not here. But nothing hits. Teleport. It doesn't uh. look like Marin teleported in. Bengi's actually flashed in for this fight. Here comes Marin. Meganoff getting close to popping, landing auto attack after auto attack. Huni's but up. should chase shortly as Steelback. He flashes forward. Position reversing you. Massive distortion comes out. Bengi's low, fake is low, bang's low, but it's Wolf that's down. Mar Huni has spawned and he's dropped the equalizer in the back line to drop. Faker. Now Morin will be the next to fall as he throws the chimney, the house, and Rain overthrows the barrel in a moment. That is a clean ace for Fnatic. Pony. Pony bites the bullet, takes the death without expending his ultimate or his flash, and they get an ace for it. That's going to be Baron as well. Yeah, and that lack of a respect for the death timer right there, continuing to go in for SK Telecom. Now it's going to be the the Baron for Fnatic, this is exactly what they need to actually close out this game. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Fnatic at their finest. When games are chaotic and aggressive, they sometimes can do this. They just can't do it all the time, unfortunately. Impressive to, you know, disengage here. They do have Gragas, king of disengage from the jungle here uh, on Raynor, and they're able to buy enough time, as Mighty said, for the teleport to come in from Huni on the backside. You can see as soon as it starts channeling, they re-engage. Great initial AoE, and then once Huni arrives, it's all cleanup. The Bibbin, again, much, much better performance this time around on LeBlanc and Faker is actually the one with the non-factor mid laner this time around. Now, SK Telecom does take the Dragon in response. They're hustling into the mid lane, see if they can defend this tier two, but it's going to be a little bit unlikely here. As the Baron, though, it's so crucial for this team. When you bring up the lack of ability to push down turrets, Baron is exactly what they need to work with. And we'll see if it's going to be enough, because keep in mind that ticking time bomb of Aegis getting closer and closer. It will be there eventually. I, I, SKT's itemization has just been so poor this game. Uh, it's pretty obvious what you need to do here, and they've, they've just utterly failed in that regard, as well as Bang really taking that big hit in the laning phase and not being able to make teleport plays into bottom. Fnatic has had everything their way. Well, Rainover gets caught out. Equalizer's available. Marin oh. does try to land the knob, but does not manage to connect. They find the kill onto Rainover, oh. and the Equalizer is melting SKT! Double kill for Huni! He turns his attention to Bangi. Flamespit is throwing out, and Bangi's in retreat. Huni looking for the Electro Hop. Boons not going to get the kills, but they will get the tower. A one for two after Rainover got caught out. Can they crack the inhibitor turret, though? That is the big key. This team has such a hard time taking down turrets, they would love to get this objective. Well, we'll see if they can. Steelback gets a couple auto attacks down, but he's run out of minions. 
Got that Siege Companion ticking away. We just see Yellow Top in the top lane, and here comes Huni for more backup. Now, Marin's there, but he may not have the HP to actually deal with Here comes Bengi as him. well. Oh, this is going to be scary. Huni's in trouble, does have Hourglass available, no flash. <laughs> And Yellow Star backs away. Fnatic on 9,000 gold up. And with the distraction top, Fibivin says hello and knocks on the back door of SKT. That was a great job by Fnatic just to go ahead and take all of the tier twos in one go, not over committing to taking the inhibitor turret, instead splitting up, getting the other two. And look at the side wave pressure. Big waves already built by Fnatic. Fantastic control of the map. So rain over here, getting caught while the rest of the team funnels through, but they get caught, they group up right on the... You can't do this game. again. Oh, oh my god. What a oh. great combo they, from Fnatic. They were baited in by Fabidin there. They wanted to take out the LeBlanc, and Yellow Star plus Huni jump on the opportunity. Yellow Star, 0, zero 14 and that Annie is incredible this game. The side wave control, though, we have to revisit that side wave control. That was beautiful. They shoved up the mid lane with Baron buff with ginormous waves on both sides. And as soon as they got the turret, they split to send one member with Baron buff to each of those big waves. So the big wave built up is going to do a lot to the turret. But the big wave, all empowered by Baron buff, is a huge influx of gold for Fnatic. They got almost 5,000 gold off of that Baron buff. And this is the time where that big, big gold lead will take into effect. They absolutely can dive the turrets right now, which is a big, big win condition for them because they have to get these inhibitors down. And that was really the only way with this comp that they were going to be able to do it. So Fnatic in a very good place. See if they can close this game out. Every single time we look at Fnatic in this game, they are improving upon the steps they need to win. SKT played their team composition flawlessly in game one. Waited for their time and then took advantage. Fnatic have played aggressive as their team composition needs to play out. And SKT have come back from a 10k goal deficit. They did it yesterday against AHQ because AHQ were too passive. Yeah, Will Fnatic make the same mistake? Again, that, that gold deficit in this game is still very substantial, but it doesn't mean as much as you think it does just due to the efficiency of the itemization. All right, so SKT. This game, whether they win it or lose it, they have to start thinking about Easy Hoon and Faker because this Ari pick has not done anything for them. Yes, he had some good early roams, and he was roaming before Fabivan all, for almost all of the engages, but he has not been a factor for the team fights. And that's what it has come down to time and time again on this patch, in this meta, with Fnatic. It's all about these team fights when they group up. And also, credit to Steelback for doing a great job of targeting Faker over and over yeah, again. Yeah, flash right on. With the position reverser, he really knows what his target is, just go in as hard as possible, take Faker out of the fight early, force him to use the Spirit Rush to retreat as opposed to clean up fights. I think every individual member of Fnatic is performing better than they have all week. And SKT, arguably most of them underperforming. We're seeing missed skill shots for positioning. Yellow Stars hit three, four, five-man stuns almost every team fight. Yes, he has. Yesterday, his Annie barely stunned a scuttle crab. So, <laughs> no, it, I, it's a, it is harsh, but it is also, I think, true. The impact that Fnatic is having individually is very impressive. And Huni is going to be able to dodge out and teleport away. So, I think he thought there were more people on the way because <laughs> last time, uh, Marin showed that much aggression. You know, Faker was there as well. But it <laughs> the mind games could yes. be. That's actually pretty huge not to have that teleport up for the next few minutes, considering that SKT could use this to take a 5v4 fight if possible. And at least it'll allow them to deny side wave control from Fnatic and drag this game out a little bit longer. Yeah, 20 seconds till the next dragon. They might not be able to get it. Huni uh -oh. forced to flash. Equalizer comes out. He gets knocked up before he can hourglass. Equalizer puts some damage down, but it's not enough. And Fevervin is a year and a half away. That's a start. It's a bang in Faker. The damage dealers. Rainov has got Faker. Now we see Bengi peeling away. Morin left alone in the middle. 
the lane as Rain of is trying to run down Wolf. Morin turns big enough, stays alive a few seconds longer before Fevervin takes him down. Dragon has spawned Rain over and Fnatic will have the pick of the litter when it comes to objectives. And Rain is looking for more. He should find Wolf, Bengi, and Bang should get away unless Yellow Star has something to say about it. He's going to look for a stun. Be be very careful. Here comes the rest of Fnatic. That's a knockup. Yellow Star, sacrificial lab. He gets one. Fevervin looks for more. This will be another. for you. <laughs> they definitely don't. They were trying to get something before the Baron started right there. Get a pick, but it, they're just getting desperate because with that TP down, that's not. you don't want to make the play onto the guy with the TP exactly. down. You want to make the play onto the the opposite side of the map of the guy with the DP. So SK Telecom shot calling this game has really been a mess and Fnatic has capitalized on every advantage that they've been given. Yep, both times. Uh, Huni. Uh-oh. Under attack again. Hooney's in trouble, and Equalizer comes out. That's not good enough. Faker gets the kill. They do get Baron in reply. This should be a dragon then for SKT. Hooney getting a little bit antsy. Yeah, this once game again, is out. Fnatic grabbed the Baron, but again, on the backside, SKT pick up another dragon. Now, this won't be a factor until much, much later in the game if SKT are able, able to turtle for much longer. But it is creeping in there. Uh, keep in mind, inhibitor turrets have not been touched for a while. Orange got Meganar. A lot of tank stats to back that up. And Fnatic, four members with Baron. Still holding on to their mid outer turrets. I think that's important to note how SKT has been stifled out of their own map. But they're going to do a Fnatic death push onto Fnatic. There's no, no teleport available. Rainover's in trouble. He's being focused down by three. Where is the position reverser? Rest of Fnatic in the top lane. Rainover's keeping them busy. They're going to trade jungler for jungler. Huni does not have equalizer. Keep an eye on that cooldown. As Steelback has already channeled his ultimate. Marin's in the middle, mid. though. Oh, never oh! mind. Oh! finds Bang. And Yellowstar's looking for a stun. That was a lot of bursts. <laughs> a huge amount of damage from Fabivin right there. And you can see SK Telecom just fleeing back to their base right now. The question is, Fnatic has been chunked. How hard can they push this Baron? Because it's all about just waiting out the Baron and keeping the inhibitors up. So the Sivir being down, it's going to be so difficult for SKT to defend. That is the main portion of their wave clear. Ari cannot deal with Baroned up minions. Do you see Huni going to take the tower? Fnatic opt not to stick around any longer. So that is an entryway into SKT's base. Baron slowly ticking away. And now Fnatic going to turn their attention to the top lane. Bottom lane, I think, should push against Fnatic if I'm looking at that minimap correctly. And Fnatic playing this one safe and secure. But they have that open inhibitor now. That is the key, key point. Just play back if you're Fnatic, go ahead, recall, make another push here after you clean up these uh, side waves a little bit and just slowly push into SK Telecom's base if you want to take this game. All right, let's take another look here. Forbidden uses his whole combo forward and that's when SKT pressed the go button. They're a little bit disjointed here though and Rainover, full tank Gragas, the Cinderhulk jungler, takes a long time to take out. That was all without Huni there. Um, Marin takes a long time to rejoin as well. There's the flash distortion Jeez. onto all the squishies from Fabivin. If you guys are home, hashtag MSI Big Plays that. <laughs> you can definitely give him that one. He's legendary as well. 805, the chunk onto Faker. Means that Fnatic should secure this inhibitor. Whoa, one more little love tap, gentlemen. As they do take it down. And with a 15,000 gold lead and super minions and a LeBlanc that can one-shot almost anything. They're looking for more. Fake is sunned up. He's going down. And it's Feverbin that gets the kill. Fnatic with a five on four and equalizer. 
looking for more. Marin getting chunked out. Fnatic looking towards the Nexus Tower. Rain overheats a death sentence, but I don't think it will matter. Bengi's down. Featherman is 10 0 and 5. That's the win loss ratio of Faker. <laughs> and they're going to be adding another one if Fnatic has anything to say about it. But SKT have defended the Nexus Tower for now. Yellow Star has still not died on any support. One of the most dangerous supports to use. And he's been constantly flashing in for amazing stuns as well. See whether or not he can get any more. 20 seconds for Bengi. Rainova eats another death sentence, but the Nexus Tower will get shredded. Next one is being focused, and SKT will be looking to lose the first map at the mid-season Invitational. Fnatic are now on to the Nexus. They are challenging the number one team from Korea as Huni's taken down. The Nexus will fall, and it's 1-1 Fnatic. Great game for Fnatic. Really well played. They got the fights they wanted. They used their composition properly to scrap it out in the early game. And SK Telecom falling apart, not having the patience to wait for when they were strong. Definitely a lot of uh, worrisome moments there from SK Telecom. Mechanical misplays, mat movement misplays, a lot of things to clean up here. And I, I think they really have to pay uh, more respect to Huni in these matches, and they they have to think more ahead about when they're going to be using these teleports, because if you are weaker, even sometimes if you're stronger because of how good Huni is in some of these 2v2 or 3v3 plays in the bottom side, it really makes a big difference. So that, more respect. That <laughs> two versus one turnaround from Huni up in the top lane, just magnificent. He demands respect. Well, we'll see if SKT give it to